Hello scholars and adventurers. This is a one bar warden using the oak and soul ring. It's a heavy attack build and it's a little different than some of the other ones out there. So let's take a look. Bit of a disclaimer at the beginning. This is an oak and soul build. So you do need Western Skyrim for the antiquities and High Isle for the leads to get that ring. So everything else that's on this build is vanilla dungeons it's once you have that ring it's very cheap to get and the gear that's on it is very useful if you're also creating a one bar sork build as well she is a high elf but that's because my character on pcna is also a high elf so that's what i was originally testing for so but don't worry about that yes it does give you a bit of an advantage to uh, using a destro um, but it doesn't make that much difference. The, the, the parsing, it does not make the difference. So don't worry about it. Uh, choose whatever race you like. That's one of the reasons this game is so good. So we are looking at sergeants uh, as on all four of the builds I'm putting out. Possibly the fifth one, if I ever get around to finishing it. Um, they're all running sergeants. One piece on the body, the rings, and the lightning staff so the best thing of course is to take the curus if you can get it if you can remake it if you the transmutes or if it happens to drop for you um, often uh, one of the mini bosses will drop the curus it's a named piece doesn't matter run with that piece until you have the transmutes to remake it in divines or run another piece of sergeants on the body if it does drop in divines um, especially if it's the Greaves. Greaves are the chest are the ones you really want. Um, but I have one character who's running with Sabatons because they dropped in purple and divines when we were running out on vet. So that's what they went with. So don't let that stop you. You're taking a hit for the heavy regardless. Right? Heavy armor penalties. But it does not matter what piece it is. So you might as well take advantage of the greater armor and use the chest of the griefs. It's being paired with Slimecrop because it's the single biggest uh, one piece crit that you can get. Uh, if you don't have Slimecrop, go with Max Magica. You don't need Magica Return, so don't worry about that one, but Max Magica, spell damage, crit damage. Go with one of those three um, if you don't have Slimecrop. Slimecrop is easy to get, Simple vet running the same place you get your sergeants at Wayrest Sewers. So it, it's easy to do. Um, if you're half decent experience at mechanics, uh, you can solo that and vet and get that without a problem. Well, that emboss is a problem. But in general, even I can do it. And that is saying something. So... Uh, it's one of the reasons why I make these builds <laughs> to assist me in all ways possible. So it's being paired with Undaunted and Weaver. Again, Black Hard Haven, not hard. You can solo that, except for the last boss. Uh, unless you're some kind of superhero that you can get that boss down before he decides to turn you into a skeleton, it's very hard to solo because once you're turned into a skeleton, everything disappears. Not just your companion but your companion your pets everything is gone so you, you can't in in it you stay a skeleton long enough that your dots run out it's just it, it's once you turn into a skeleton it's almost impossible to finish that dungeon but you only need the body pieces so run it gather up all those pirates do them in find your chests do the mini bosses and then check for chests in the in the top before you get to the last boss, and then just pour it out and either do it again or you know go with what you got. Uh, but those the only thing you need are the body pieces, right? So these are the body pieces, all in light. I would recommend I've got the light slime crop piece on here. I would get the the medium one. Um, it, it ups the crit damage as opposed to the crit chance. Light's crit chance, medium's crit damage. Um, helps 
uh, with your undaunted process, passes if you have them uh, to uh, give you greater stamina and health return um, to have another uh, armor type. Also, then you also have the heavy, right? So you'd have medium heavy and then your light on or and you're you know you're undaunted in light that's the gear now also just another disclaimer i'm on the pts all of this is shiny gold right uh all comes in divines you know lovely but when you're out in the world and you're fighting for every last transmute you can get you're not going to necessarily have this um i've got characters that have infused in pieces they're uh, if they're lucky, they're in purple. If they're dropped in blue and it's sturdy, it's still blue. Um, so, in general, you want divines? Start with your golding. I always have my slime craw golded because I use it on everything. So it's just a default. I default just golded. Um, and the chest, neck, and Lightning Staff are what my characters tend to run around with gold. If they've been around a while, and it's something that I know I'm going to reuse, they may have the Greaves also golded. So everything in purple, gold on your chest, your neck, and your staff first. Matter of fact, I'd start with doing your jewelry in purple, doing your chest staff it grieves in gold first then to your neck and your shoulder if it's not already gold i wouldn't i wouldn't sweat it run around in purple quite honestly it's not going to make that much difference purple's a lot cheaper than going to gold run it all in purple except for your weapon gold it out uh it's it's really don't sweat it. Uh, and if you're getting drops, put the build together with whatever it comes down. If you get all the body pieces, can you run it a couple of times? Put them on. doesn't matter if they're sturdy or reinforced or well-fitted. It's still going to work. It's just not going to work as well. And then as you get the transmutes, replace them with ones that are in divine and in purple or gold if you want to splurge. But you are looking at probably a good 2k worth of difference uh, in damage. Just from maybe even 3k of damage from having everything golded here. Um, I know that if I did a parse with my character on PCNA, that they'd probably get 70 out of this. Because he, they're not all a design, divine, it's not all gold. But, so that's your gear. Let's, we've got this open for potions. It's just use your try restoration potions. You want your, you need to keep your health and your stamina up. Their magic is beside the point, but they're given to you. So you might as well just use them. If you are run out of these, uh, then use like a try a, a dual stat potion, uh, potions of immov immovability. Um, you're looking at simple. It's just Columbine, uh, Bug Loss, or Blow Goss, depending on how you like to pronounce it, uh, Numero's Rot. That will give you max health, max stamina, and immovability. So it gives you uh, a little bit of CC resistance. Um, food, try st if you're not, if you've run out of the crown uh, fortifying meals, if that's possible, or you just simply want to bump up your max magica which is definitely worthwhile you can go up another 800 by using the Eritan pickled fish bowl or for using cheaper to make uh, the minstrel bunny hash which i believe is max health and max magica and similar similar to what this pickled fish bowl is it may only be an hour i can't remember but the it's really cheap, and it, you don't need to be very high level to make it. Uh, and the recipe is cheap to get, because it's one that drops, or uh, that one might be one that just drops in the environment. The other one is Mud Balls, which is Max Magica and Max Stamina. 
Um, and it is really cheap to get. You don't need very high provisioning to make it. And it just drops from the New Year's event. So right now it's really cheap to uh, to get it because lots of people are selling it. Um, this one's more expensive to buy because it's it drops from actual fishing in Eritam. So you it's much harder to get than a lot of other ones. Uh, but you can all buy them at Traders. So go Traders. Um, so if you also if you like to fish, there you go. Um, if you have a pile of them from fishing events, then use them up. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, mud balls, bunny hash, it's really cheap. Oh, uh, Princess Delight, that's another one. Uh, it's only Max Magica, uh, but it's really high Max Magic. It's like 5,400, right? It's really high. And it's really cheap to make. All your alts could make it because it's only like provisioning one or something like that, provisioning two to make it. It's really cheap. And the other one, it's also Max Health like that, or Max Magica like that. Same deal um, is the old Ogmeri um, Orphanage Gruel or whatever it's called. It's another one that drops from the New Life Festival. They're almost identical uh, and really cheap to make. So those are fine for doing most things. Uh, but if you're a little slightly harder content, um, you might, you, you'd probably want a Max Stat food that has max health and max magica so there you go that covers our consumables and our foods uh let's take a look at cp and it's a little different than a lot of builds that you're running that are two bar builds and light attack builds it's a little different uh, for one thing you go through your enchantments much faster because you're only using you're using continuously using your staff and you're only using one of them. So you go through enchantments very quickly. So you might want to get the steadfast enchantment. Again, it's a heavy attack build. The most two of most important sodables for your heavy attacks are deadly aim because despite the area of effect damage that your lightning staff does, it's a direct single target hit with basically a splash damage around it, right? Read your passives from your weapon skills. We can look at those too. Um, so you want that. Plus the next, uh, the other most important one is this one. So those two, even if you can only afford to have two slotables, make sure it's those two. This one, weapons expert and deadly aim, or um, yeah. So this one, also when you're looking at passive, if you've got the CP, fill all these out. You're doing poison, physical, and bleed damage. The only kind of damage type this doesn't have, I think, is disease. Because I've not chosen the morph that has that. You could put a disease glyph on this instead of frost and get a third one in. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> a fourth one in. Get them all. Um, but it's running frost. Um, and so that is this, right? You've got magic damage, you've got frost damage, and you've got shock damage. So you want them all boosted. So if you've got the CP to, to get these all filled out, do so. But the most important slotables are that one and deadly aim. So the next one that's important was Thermoturge. Every one of your skills has got a dot on it. So you want Thermoturge. Yes, most of them are also AOEs, but I found that this backstabber, because I'm behind the, the dummy, is working better for me. Um, so this out in the field, this when you're in a group where you're always going to be behind your target, with this. I tried this one, it just didn't work quite as well. So out in the landscape, or dragons, or the last boss in uh, Graven Deep, sorry, Dead Cell Reef. Uh, you want this because you're in front or of the boss. This one, when you're behind the boss, then the other thing to think about, these two, which has not changed much from most builds, but usually in a magical build, you have this one filled out, but because you're constantly regenerating your magic with your heavy attacks, get Bloody Renewal, and strategic reserve. And I recommend having Spirit Mastery. 
I haven't got it filled out in here because I haven't run this particular character around. Uh, but when you're in groups, especially groups in harder content where you know people are going to die, have spirit mastery. It's good teamwork to, if you're the closest person to whoever's dead, to be the one resing them. Healers shouldn't be resing people, should always be DPS. So put on spirit mastery, you can get your colleagues up off the ground faster. And that's more important. It keeps your healers healing you, so you don't need this one. These two, that one, and this one in groups. These two, and these two, if you're soloing. Or running easier content where you're not expecting people to be dead. So there you go. Uh, there's the CP. Let's look at our skills. We've got Fetcher Infection, Magicka. That's magic damage. Remember I was talking about the passives about magic damage, boosting magic, magic damage. This is the skill that does that. This one, Frost Damage. Your Stamina Morph. You need to have the Stamina Morph. It runs every six seconds. You need to have your stamina skill used every 10 seconds at least. So this is six seconds. That means you could probably get a light, uh, heavy attack in without having to use a skill or, you know, weaving your other um, skills down on your heavy attacks gives you some time to get this out again. But you have to have the stamina morph. The uh, bull netch, because it gives you stamina return, because we are using a stamina skill, plus you, uh, with this, all the light gear and and um, all the magic abilities, you uh, and very little stamina, you need to, something to help keep it up. If you're, you know, especially if you're in a moving fight, where you're going to be doing blocking and dodging and trying to have your spammable go. Deceptive Predator, it gives you minor evasion when you trigger it, or with your with it slotted, and it's something you don't have with your ring, and uh, it gives you an immunity to immobilization when you're in content. So a lot of times I'll use that instead of a shield. If you're facing down Stabby Boss, this actually has worked fairly well, um, but you are using light armor, then uh, Dampen Magic is an excellent shield you can use in, re in, in place of this. You can also use Shivering Shields. If you're getting hurt from ranged attacks, this one does a really good job. Um, like projectiles, you can put on, you can go with either Ice Fortress. If you're doing solo content, it's an excellent shield too. You can replace it with that. I tend to leave it with the other morph uh, because it, it it's shareable, right? You, you uh, applies to your group. So that's your swap outs, um, suck to predator for one of those skills. Um, the other option, if you're in a, uh, a mick, like a, like a, just a plain trash packs where there aren't like a super um, painful two handers or flame shapers or things like that then you could just put on Arctic Blast instead of Fetcher Inflection, Infection because um, this is a single target. And the, you know, I, 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 I a lot of times won't swap, but if you've got um, Wizard's Wardrobe, then you could have it swap this for doing trash and then swap back to your Fetcher Flies for single target fights or fights that have two handers or flame shapers or large jumpy cats or whatever. It's something that really will hurt um, and need to be taken down quickly. So I often just use this um, even and don't swap it out often in a lot of fights. It does depend on what content you're running, but um, since it's one of the first skills you're leading with, 
then you might as well just use it. I start with it so you can tag your primary target with your Fletcher flies and uh, just keep using the rest of this as you go along because everything else is AOE except for your bear. Just keep that in mind. There are a couple of swappables that can, you know, affect your gameplay. But in general, most content, this is what I run. Let's do a quick parse so that I'll just cut it in half, sorry, the beginning and the end, so that uh, you don't have to watch it because it is a trial dummy and it does take a while. So uh, far as targeting your primary target, I usually do that, especially if it's one of those ones where you've got a flame shaper uh, or you've got a berserker, or you've got a big two-hander um, in that trash pack, you can target it, and so you're ready to go when you, the um, when the group is ready to go. Then you can put up your niche, which doesn't trigger any fights, send in the bear, hit him with fighter flies, and then just Bam. And keep everything down. The bear is already up. It's the wrong key. It's really gonna be a stellar parse. Anyway, I'm not the best parser. I'll see you at the end. Okay, there we go. We're looking at 73.7. Must be getting tired. My uh, parses are going down. The second one you see there is actually uh, the Fetcher flies and the lock swipe of the bear still on the target dummy when it got reborn. Uh, but the previous stats, previous parses. So that one was 73.7. Uh, previous to that was 74.9. Previous to that was 75.4, <laughs> so you can see in this one, uh, I'm not sure, I, that might have been the uh, one of the other uh, gears right there. But anyway, fashion, and she's wearing Dread Sails robe. She's wearing the medium of the shoulders, gloves, and feet. Uh, Zons. She's got the Wayward Guardian Lightning Staff. Well, staff period, I guess. And the Waking Flame Hat. Colors wise, uh, two of them are easy to get. That's the Altmer and Bronze. It's the Evanheart Master Explorer. And uh, Viridian Venom, which is your Texacologist achievement. And then Sunspire, or Sunforge Patina from the Hero of Fargrave achievement. All PvE sort of stuff. Uh, the only one here this is the green on the staff. Bright Fern Green. And you need to do the Vet, uh, Graven Deep, and Earth... Uh, this one. Lots, Depths, Delver. And it is the Earthen Root Explorer. And Graven Deep. They have to be done in vet in order to get the color. Anyway, I hope that was uh, helpful. And again, this is a build designed for a casual gamer, for older gamers, people with arthritis like I have. Um, these builds have been much easier on me. Uh, fingers are a little stiff. It's a little bit harder to get things going faster. Uh, people coming in from simpler games where they're like confounded by having to hit two bars and extra things and they're only in here a couple of times in the weekend. Uh, this kind of thing is way easier than trying to learn your light attack weaving. If you are a member of the Society of Scholars, I have Thursday event, which 
uh, is designed to, it's a help desk. So if you ever need help getting any of the gear uh, or your leads for your Oakensole ring or anything else, you have to finish bosses in a zone. Just what you want to do in the events chat on Thursday and I will help you do it. I'm also sitting in the voice chat in general if you just want to drop in and say, hi, I need help. <laughs> we want to go do this. So it's like, yep, let's go do it, okay? Um, if you are an adventurer out in the SO and not a member of the guild or not in PCNA, uh, I do uh, stream on Twitch four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Just drop in and ask your questions. Um, anything about the game or about any of these builds, uh, just drop in, say hi. Happy adventuring. Bye.